His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday represented Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II at the 152nd Sovereign's Parade at the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Upon arrival, His Royal Highness was received by the Commandant of the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, Major General Paul Nansen. At the start of the ceremony, the Bahrain Royal Anthem was played. divisions up the old college steps and the remainder off parade. Sir. Carry on the moment. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince then inspected the parade.
As part of the ceremony, the flag of the completed graduation term was presented to the new term. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince then delivered the keynote address. Royal Highnesses, Commandant, Officer Cadets, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. It is indeed a great honour to stand before you representing Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth at today's Sovereign's Parade. Congratulations to you all. Completing the commissioning course is a great achievement. I know how much hard work today represents and having been here as a parent, I know also how much your accomplishment means to your families and friends and how proud of you they are. Many of our officers in the Bahrain Defense Force trained at Sandhurst, including my father, His Majesty King Hamad. We are very proud of this long tradition. It underlines the very strong bonds established between us 200 years ago. These long-lasting ties across security, economy, and society are continually strengthened through an active partnership between our two nations. Today marks a vitally important day for you all as you leave Sandhurst and embark on your careers in changing times. You are stepping forward on a path of significant importance as leaders at the front end of new conflicts that offer profound challenges to our modern societies. As military officers and defenders of our nations and our values, you will, you will take on great responsibility. Where you fight, you will fight to secure a greater peace. You will operate in uniquely uh, testing circumstances, often against those pursuing an agenda of hatred, discord, and destruction. And you will not lose your humanity in the face of this challenge. The deep capacity for humanity is a defining characteristic of officers trained at Sandhurst. Even in the most testing of circumstances, it is a vital underpinning of your success. You will make difficult judgments, often with incomplete information. Those judgments will have profound effects on those around you, those you lead, those who are fighting you, and the many civilians who are at risk in modern conflicts. You will remember that you are dealing with human beings with human lives. You will strike hard when you need to, but treat those under your command, as well as those under your protection, regardless of race, creed, or color, with consideration and dignity. That responsibility, that leadership, and that judgment will be essential in helping you face and address the threats of today. Increasingly, those, increasingly addressing those threats will involve us fighting asymmetric wars alongside armies of failed and faltering states, fighting terrorist insurgent groups, and fighting micro-constituencies of fanatics and the disenfranchised, for whom religious conflict itself is the primary purpose. By way of example, the ruptures within the modern-day order of the Middle East have created a multitude of uncertain consequences. The breakdown of, of many of the region's state paradigms has served to enhance and magnify the power of warped ideologies. These conflicts and the ideologies they ultimately empower have led to the largest migration crisis in modern times, threatening not only the values but the very social fabric of Europe. The global battle ahead is therefore a clash of pluralism 
and respect for individual identity versus those who pursue fascist ideologies. Ideologies which are exclusionary, sectarian, and increasingly masked by a religious veneer. We must all come together, showing a firmness of conviction and belief, strengthening bonds of unity and tolerance against the wishes of religious fascists who wish to divide and destroy. But rest assured, you are prepared for the task at hand. Your training is renowned for its excellence, and your directing staff are to be applauded for the strength of training you have received. That training has begun here, but will continue throughout your careers. You will learn from the situations you face. You will learn from the peace you preserve and defend, and also from the peace you will sometimes have to fight to win. But you will also continue to learn, most importantly, from those fighting for you and those fighting alongside you in different uniforms. While they will seek your guidance and expertise, they will also be in a position to guide and teach you in return. The steadfast application of your leadership code, the principles of courage, discipline, respect for others, integrity, loyalty, and selfless commitment will be vital. Not only in winning the immediate military battles you will face, but also contributing to the successful conclusion of the ideological war we are in, in which we are all engaged. I wish you all good fortune as you meet your challenges, challenges head on. You have, a, you have highly rewarding careers ahead of you. You have already shown that you are capable of great success, and I wish you the very best in your future endeavors. With, with officers of your caliber operating at the front line, I believe strongly that our chances of securing greater peace in the world can only be enhanced. Thank you. Then the military parade commenced.
His Royal Highness proceeded to award the top officer cadets with the Sword of Honour, the Overseas Sword and the Queen's Medal. Whoa! 
His Royal Highness went on to meet the commissioning officers, praising them for their significant achievements throughout their time at Royal Military Academy Sandhurst and wished them further success in their military careers. This year's commissioning platoon included Officer Cadet Abdullah bin Hamid Al Khalifa and Officer Cadet Hamid Isa Al Rumehi from the Kingdom of Bahrain. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sport and founder of the KHK MMA organization, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, arrived in the United States, state of Florida, to attend the UFC on Fox 19 Fight Night, organized by the Ultimate Fighting Championship on the 16th of April, in order to support the two professional fighters, Khabib Nurmagomedov and Islam Makashev. Upon His Highness's arrival at the airport, he was briefed on the preparations of the two fighters and expressed confidence in their abilities to achieve positive results in the championship and to honour the Kingdom in such a major sporting event. His Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's participation in such an event would contribute in boosting Bahrain's status in the MMA field. <laughs> 